I play a lot of Quake, but I also work with graphic design and video. Even though I use multiple monitor setups, it's great having one that can do it all, because that means I don't have to turn my head awkwardly, and I can use a cheap second monitor for less important things. So the ViewSonic XG 2703GS could be a good choice for people like me. For gaming, it's 27 inch, which I personally prefer. But make sure your graphics card can handle the WQHD resolution. It's 2560 by 1440. Using 1920 by 1080 will be a bit blurry. And on that note, 1440 is much clearer anyway. It can do 165 hertz, but that's overclocked, and they give a warning about it possibly shutting down. I don't think it's even worth the slight risk, as I couldn't really see much difference, if any. So I'd use this at 144 hertz. It's really smooth anyway. It's 4 milliseconds but you have to set it to ultra fast mode in the response time area. I tried to test the speed side by side with the one millisecond response monitor, but even with ultra fast mode off, the camera isn't fast enough to detect the difference. So I'm just going to tell you based on my experience. Ultra fast mode feels maybe slightly slower than a one millisecond monitor, but it's very hard to tell. This one also has G-Sync, so with G-Sync on getting over 144 FPS, or 165 if you set it to that, then there might be some slight delay. G-Sync on but limiting your FPS to under the refresh rate, that might only have a very very minor delay. And I think G-Sync off, 144Hz with ultra fast mode on, is probably about the same, maybe a tiny bit better. In other words, it's not too noticeable, but I thought I could feel the mouse become a bit heavier when using the different modes, and switching between the monitors. So I'd say make sure ultra fast mode is on, and if you put G-Sync on, limit your FPS to under the refresh rate, or just leave it off. Both are smooth and good, depends what you want. And lastly, it's an IPS type panel, with viewing angles of 178 degrees, as I'll try to show you here, from the side, to the top, and then the bottom. This actually does help in graphic design, because I don't have to get up and move around just to see if the colours are right. I can just sit however I like. It handles glare well with a matte finish, so shining a bright light on it, that's the usual bright spot, but it's not reflective. Actually, the glass quality seems really good on this. No vertical line problem like I've had with another monitor, no grain in the glass, it's all very clear, all good. For ghosting, it doesn't get picked up on camera properly, but it's very slight on the top, a little more on the one below, and even more on the one below that. It's not perfect, but still very good. For physical dimensions, the base is basically a square, so it's 27cm long and wide, and the base only extends about 6cm away from the screen. The lower it can be adjusted to is 6cm from the desk, and then up to 16cm. So the stand allows 10cm of adjustment, and that puts the top of the monitor at about 52cm. The screen is about 62cm wide across the top. One problem with the top is that it has this little edge. I don't know why. It actually makes it hard to put a webcam on it. So that might be an example of over design, doing something for the look that causes a problem with the functionality. It also rotates to portrait mode, tilts back and forth, and while the design turns the entire stand, the plate on the bottom does make for easy adjustments, so you can move it side to side as well. The front of the base is glossy, it's matte behind it, and there's an LED in the stand, which can be turned off in the menu. Also, it actually alters its brightness with the screen, as shown here. One thing I don't like is the green trim around the frame. I prefer to define my setups with lights, so having any colour on the monitor isn't good for me. I'd rather monitors to stay all black. The stand looks fairly stylish, plastic, but solid enough, and it has a headphone holder on the back. That is a great place to put it, so headphones are hidden away when not in use. There are two USB 2.0 ports on the side, which is great for quickly using a USB stick, and it has two USB 3.0 ports on the bottom the USB cable next to it, and the power cable. I use the 3.0 ports for webcams, so this is perfect placement, as I don't like having cables coming from the side of the monitor. For connections, it has a 1.2a display port, HDMI, and headphone jack. I think overall, it's a great looking monitor, and it has some well thought out ideas for the placement of the features, except the green. Looking through the menus, HDMI and display, adjust audio if you use the speakers, in view mode you can set the dark boost to brighten the blacks, it has flicker free technology, and low blue light. My eyes haven't gone red after hours of playing, so it seems great so far. And then response time, you can also set up different modes, and of course the usual contrast, brightness, and usual options. That's all personal preference, I'll leave it to you to figure out, but even default looks fine. Speaking of personal preference, I don't like the menu buttons like this. I find them hard to navigate. That said, once you get it set up, you won't have to use them much, so it doesn't really matter. My camera can only record in 50 frames per second, but games look very smooth. I've been using it for a few weeks now, and really enjoyed it. I've also been using it during my streaming lately.
Great features, great design, some things I think could be improved, but it really is an amazing monitor. I'm looking forward to future gaming monitors from ViewSonic. I had a hard time deciding between the 4 millisecond and G-Sync of this monitor and the 1 millisecond of the other. I think the 1 millisecond monitor is very slightly faster, but overall, this one is better. I think I'd be happy to use it in a competition type setting, but I won't know for sure until I try it. All I can say for now is it's a great solution if you want an all-in-one monitor. With great colours, really good response time, and amazing viewing angles, I'd call this a gamer slash designer monitor. Definitely one of my favourites that I've ever used, but I would like to see a flat top for the webcams, an all black design, no green on it, and maybe some other upgrades. I would probably try to save money and not have G-Sync on it though, but that's personal preference. For now, this is really good, so if you want an all-in-one solution, and you have the budget for it, then I'm happy to recommend it. Special thanks to ViewSonic for sending this out for review, and if you want to buy one and help support the channel, I'll leave the usual links in the description. Subscribe for more reviews and gaming videos, like this one, and I'll catch you in the next.